Hi, this is Casey from Jetty USA, and today I'm joined with James, and we're going to go over Jetty's update version 4.0 for your DC and DS transmitter. So before we get started talking about the update, I want to make sure that everyone knows it is always very important to back up your models and your settings be before doing any sort of update. Um, after you do back up your, your models and do your update, you should verify all your throws and your settings before you actually go out and fly, just to make sure everything is still the way you had it programmed. Now, one of the, the biggest things with this new update is the 24 channels. So can you tell me a little bit about what separates um, this update with the 24 versus the past updates? Yeah, what we've done is taken and given you access to eight additional channels with the firmware. Um, you'll have eight digitally proportional channels added to the original 16. Uh, you, what you won't have with those new eight is you won't have the balance function that you're used to. Um, everything else will be there, uh, but with the current architecture and current firmware, we couldn't incorporate that. Uh, that'll be part of you know a completely new architecture and a completely new radio. Um, what that does though, it allows you to add to your current environment, add an extra CB100, extra CB200, or use the CB400 to its fullest extent and assign all 24 of those channels uh, to individual outputs on the radio. Uh, a lot of guys that are flying big scale models will really take advantage of that. Awesome. Now, one of the new things in the update is the multi-copter mode. Um, can you tell us what that does for actually the guys that fly the multis out there? Well, a lot of the guys flying there, you know, there's a lot of different categories in multi. Uh, this kind of focused a little more on the camera ship guys, but it will apply to the race guys and, and the sport guys as well. Um, when you go in and you set up a new model, typically what we had was airplane, helicopter in general. And what we've done is we've ad actually added a multi-copter icon. Uh, what that does is when you set it up, it automatically gives you a choice between three different gimbal types. Uh, none, of course, a basic, which is a, a two-axis, and an advanced, which is a three-axis. Also gives you three separate gyro controls, which you can activate. You use those to activate different functions on the craft, RTH or whatever you want to use it for. Um, so it, it allows you to dial in a little easier on multi-rotor without having to add a lot of functions like you would have before setting it up as an airplane. What does the um, new pilot voice caller do? Oh, pilot voice is awesome. This is something that guys did themselves uh, through rewriting firmware and other things uh, in the past two years. Jetty went and, and really took what they had done and expanded on it. This is for guys that fly iMac or F3A or F3C where they fly a specific sequence of maneuvers through timed events. Um, those, if those maneuvers in each sequence actually have a name and so what this program allows you to do is assign a voice output to each maneuver, assign a switch, typically a three position momentary, so that you can move forward after each maneuver or backwards and repeat the maneuver before it. So if you're out practicing for F3A, uh, typically you would have to have your caller to read the arrest and, and, and tell you what you had to do next. Uh, with this situation, you'll fly the maneuver, you'll bump the button, it'll read the next maneuver as you fly through. So it'll allow you to run your entire sequence without having a caller there or having to reach down to hit stop and start on an audio recorder. Uh, it works really well. And you said it's really easy to go back and forth between them? It is. Actually, if you bump the button once, it'll move the, the audio forward. If you bump it back once, it'll move to the beginning of that track or that audio sequence. Uh, if you hold the button, it'll jump all the way back to the beginning and reset the sequence to start from new. So if you're flying, you've made a bunch of mistakes, you want to scrub and start over, you just hold that switch for a moment, it starts, restarts the sequence and allows you to fly back through it. Awesome. What about the um, new alarms, the inactivity and the low Q alarm? Well, low Q was something that was added to complement our low antenna, our low signal strength warning. Uh, you can actually set the value, so if you want to set your low Q alarm, uh, say for 40% and that's your threshold, uh, you set the alarm, set the audio that you want to hear with that and it'll play that back to you. The other thing is the inactivity. This is something a lot of the manufacturers had that a lot of the customers, including myself, uh, missed when we switched over to Jetty and that was something to tell us that we had forgotten to turn the transmitter off and we shut our model off and we set the radio down. 
Uh, it's really nice to be able to set the radio down, walk away, you start chatting in the meal, and the thing buzzes or, 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 or beeps or squawks or whatever audio you put on to tell you, hey, you forgot to turn your radio off. I think a lot of guys are going to appreciate this. Yeah, save a lot of battery. Huh? Oh, yeah. Um, when we're talking about you know things that could help you when you're not necessarily flying, what about the pre-flight check? Uh, Pre-flight check is another new feature that was created to really help the pilot out. Um, especially with some of the high-powered electric models, it's very easy uh, when you're flying a 12S model or a multi-pack model uh, to grab one charge pack and one discharge pack, throw them in the model, button up, and, and take off the ground. Uh, Pre-flight check allows you to set uh, alarms based on your telemetry values and only activate those at startup. So what that would mean is you put the packs in, it would tell you automatically if you had your voltage set at four, four volts or less, or four volts or more, it would tell you, hey, you put in a pack that's discharged, it would signal the alarm. That would tell you not to fly the, the aircraft. That's great. Um, some things they come with extended telemetry, more voice outputs. Can you kind of elaborate on what what that means for yeah, sure. the new firmware. Yeah, what we've always done with our voice outputs is we really had two. We had one that was trigger um, and then one that was repeat. And what you had to do was you had to build a series of telemetry voice outputs and assign them either to run continuously or assign them to a trigger. But even if you assign them to a trigger, it played everything that you had selected and you had to select the order. Now what we've done is we've broken it up we allow you to assign individual voice outputs for telemetry to individual switches. So you, so you have one output on one switch. So if you only want to hear your speed or you only want to hear your altitude, you set those on separate switches and toggle that switch only one, when you want to hear that particular output. So it's a huge improvement. Yeah, because I can imagine listening to all of those go over and over again oh, just for one telemetry. Oh, it drives you crazy. <laughs> Um, now, on the notes, um, you see the latest EX bus device definitions. What does that mean? Uh, that's kind of a, a funny way to say it, but what it is is they've gone into the EX bus firmware and they've added definitions or they've added structure to support additional devices. So a couple of things that were missing, the Central Box 400, um, when it launched, guys were only able to access it through Jetty Box. Now they'll be able to access that device through the Device Explorer and, and have full visual um, capability on that device. They've also added the MLT, uh, the Rex receivers, and a couple of, of sensors that are coming up down the pipe, the MFlow 2 and the MLT 2 and, and those things. So. Okay. Cool, so it's already set up to kind of grow with us. That's so correct, yeah, that's correct. A um, few other features they have, obviously some additional units mm -hmm. for some of the sensors, um, and then also the telem telemetry controls for signal quality. Mm -hmm. um, what exactly does that do? Uh, we've always had telemetry controls in the radio. It's kind of a big part of the Jetty thing. Is, well, I don't want to say always, um, since about midway through the, the development. Uh, but what that does is allows you to, to use an alarm to activate a function uh, on the aircraft itself. And we've never had the ability to use low signal quality um, or low Q value to trigger something. Uh, guys that are flying large camera ships are really going to appreciate this. So you can now set up a telemetry function based on low Q value that says if my Q value drops below 30%, activate return to home. So it'll be an automated function. They won't wait until that drops out to zero or something happens. It'll actually go ahead and switch over. It'll send the, the vehicle into RTH and it'll we'll come back and land for them. So I think the, the guys in the multi are really going to appreciate having that on the radios. Cool. Um, also, one of the things I noticed in there is there is a new axis, so to speak, with the gyroscope. For, is that for a hand launch and how does that kind of work? Yeah, it's called, it's a GHI um, and they, they introduced it as uh, something specific for DLG or hand launch gliders, uh, which it, it could be. Um, basically the GHI signal or, or recognizes large inputs, the accel accelerometers and gyros in the radio. Um, so in hand launch, when you wind up, it's a big movement on the radio and it's going to recognize that and allow you to start a timer, let's say, or activate a function by that large movement. Um, one of the funny things is we were looking at how it works and you could actually use that um, 
if you fly in a really uneven rocky place, if you're if you're a, a dynamic soar and you're you're flying on uneven slopes, um, you could use that to trigger a fail safe in the aircraft if you were to fall down or lose your footing on the slopes or lose your balance. So you didn't lose the aircraft and, and your yourself, so to speak. Um, so it's got some some potential there to use that in ways we have yet to even discover. So it'll be fun to play with that. Yeah. Um, I also noticed on there that the servo balancer actually got a, a new feature with a, a lock. Mm -hmm, the lockout. Yeah, what's well, awesome. Everybody who's ever done the servo balancer knows that you know, you're trying to adjust everything for your right travel. You're having to sit there and hold the stick to the right and kind of, you know, measure the surface and move the, the you know, the, the slider so you can get everything done. Uh, now what you do is you're actually going to move the slider to the right. You're going to hit the function four key under the screen on the radio. That's going to lock the travel over to that side for you so you can physically take your hand off of the radio, off of the stick measure the surface and go ahead and use the other hand to adjust the slider. So it's going to make adjusting the airplane and matching those three or four aileron servos in a large wing for those two elevator servos, it's going to make that a lot easier to do. You'll be able to do that without having an extra set of hands. So. Now that's about it for, for new features. Is there anything that has been modified? Um, like I know there was an issue um, that I think they were addressing in this. Can you talk about what mm -hmm. um, they solved? Yeah, there were a couple of things they changed or made modifications to existing firmware. One of those was in our voice outputs. Um, previously, if you had a voice output set or an alarm set to repeat, it would repeat three times. And during that repeat, it could actually interfere with other alarms going off. And guys that were running uh, countdown timer or battery timers, so they were at 1800 and 1500, um, they would go from 1500, the alarm would start going off, 18 would go off, and it would never sound because it was overlapped by the other alarm. And they've actually made a fix there to eliminate that overlap and keep that bug from, from occurring. Um, I know there were a couple other little things we've done with the radio. Um, of course, for, for our friends, you know, uh, down south of the border there in Brazil, we've added Portuguese as a language to the radio, which is a huge improvement a lot of guys were looking for. Um, and the, you had mentioned uh, we've changed the units of measure. That was something a lot of guys are looking for. So whether you're, you're, you're measuring your flow or volume, um, we've added additional units of measure. So you'll be able to use the one you're used to, whether it be feet or HL or ML or, or whatever you're looking for. They've added a huge variety. That's gonna help you guys out a ton when you're trying to set your telemetry up in a way that you really recognize or match it to other telemetry you already have. Well, thanks for clarifying. Sure. Um, if any of you out there watching have any more questions about it, please feel free to go onto our website. You can check out all the release notes right there. Um, they give breakdowns of what's been added, what's been changed. Um, and you can also get the update right there on our website. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. See you.